Hello, I'm Keith Marciniak. I'm here again with CC Doucet from Ashland, Massachusetts. CC is a technology educator. Yes. And we've been talking in the past. Um, in the past, we've talked about how we both discovered Wi-Fi dangers, mm -hmm. how you brought it to the schools. Mm -hmm. um, other groups and legislatures, they're all listening, yeah. and, and there's a momentum behind um, the subject matter. Yeah. And um, we also discussed why the public is not knowledgeable about Wi-Fi the dangers, the radiation itself, mm -hmm. right? So those are biological effects that we discussed. Mm -hmm. um, there might be some areas where we still want to talk about biological effects, yeah. like specifically like sleeping and things yeah. insomnia. Okay. Uh, but we're also going to talk about uh, the psychological effects of our younger generation today, mm -hmm. right? Because you grow up with a computer in your hand now. The kids just fly through the screens, right? Yeah. They're like, so. It's, um, it's, it's. What, uh, yeah, what do you know about that? Well. When this panel of world experts came to speak to the Massachusetts legislature a year ago, I understood why Dr. Deborah Davis was there because she's a scientist. Dr. Sharma was a scientist from India. Mm -hmm. Frank Clegg was there. He was the former Microsoft Canada president. Janet Newton was there and she told us about protecting the people who have to work on the rooftops near all of these antennas. The fifth person was Dr. Katherine Steiner Adair, and she's a child psychologist. And up to that point in my own investigative research, I had only known about biological effects. And I was so grateful after her talk to understand what this technology as a whole is doing to our children and our society. So um, to give a little bit of background about physiologically what this technology does to us. Mm -hmm. It, we know it does at least three or four different things. We are all bioelectric beings, and I don't think anybody would contest that because we operate off of these little cell-to-cell -cell communications all day, all night long. And when we are exposed to electromagnetic radiation, it breaks that cell and causes a leakage at the voltage-gated calcium channels. And I'm not a scientist, so I don't really understand what that means, but. When it leaks, it creates this chemical reaction outside of the cell, and that produces this awful free radical called peroxynitrite. So when you say biological effects, you're specifically talking about how the radiation from the Wi-Fi right. affects our cells. Right, so what's it actually doing yeah. to us? So it creates peroxynitrite. It impacts our blood and causes our blood cells to start glomming together in ways that are not right. So if your blood cells are glomming together, that could explain why you're now getting a headache around your Wi-Fi. Clumping of blood cells yeah. I, I've researched. And why okay. so often those, those searing headaches often start coming on with nose bleeds or ear bleeds or the ringing in our ears because we've got this microwave radiation energy coming at our ears all the time. So if any of the viewers out there experience any of these yeah. symptoms or know um, any children, right. Or right. your child experiencing the systems. This and is this is for for you guys. Yeah, this is for real. Yeah. And so we've got the blood issue. We've got the proxy nitrite. Another issue is that, as part of our circadian rhythm, in the wee hours of darkness, our brain releases um, melatonin. And so, what happens with this light form of electromagnetic radiation constantly around us? The pineal gland in our brain can't distinguish between natural light mm -hmm. and this light energy form that's microwave radiation from all of our Wi-Fi. So, so whatever our brain's not it, releasing it the melatonin, yeah. and the melatonin's job is to go on and clean up these things like the free radicals. And even when we're doing normal cell repair while we sleep, there's debris that's left behind, and melatonin goes in and helps to clean that out. So even back in the days before Wi-Fi was even around, your body mm -hmm. naturally at night would release melatonin right. and it would de you know, yeah. clean whatever up the cells. Toxins. Whatever your cells yeah. are always dying on you, so something's got to clean it up. Right. Uh, but now what you're saying with Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. your body doesn't know. You don't get a break. So the body never cleans. Yeah, so our cell repair and regeneration okay. is hampered. Um, and in a controlled medical situation, we are now using this technology, Wi-Fi radiation, to do things like stimulate bone cell growth, stimulate stem cell growth, but because we're now using it all over in a totally uncontrolled way, mm -hmm. it's causing cells in our body to grow that we don't want to grow. So um, I know with women who have experienced breast cancer quite often, 
their melatonin's down like 90%, and this could help to explain why. Um, so it, it's tough. And, you know, we've heard things in the media of late that you want to dim the blue light on your device if you're going to bed with it, watching a movie, catching up on your emails, playing games. Dim that blue light. Well, sure, that's okay. That's a good thing to do. But they're not telling us that that Wi-Fi radiation is a form of light, and our brains can't catch a break if it's constantly on. Right, right. And it's a stimulant. So uh, if any parents experience this with their children, where can they go? Is there, we'll have links. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely put up links, but there's... Because um, there, there's always something that, like, have yeah, you tried this yet? And right, this is, right, right, right. Yeah. So Dr. Katherine Steiner Adair, when she came and spoke to the State House, I ran out and got her book afterwards. It's called The Big Disconnect. And the subtitle is Protecting Childhood and Family Relationships in the Digital Age. And what Dr. Katherine Steiner Adair tells us in this book is she takes it from developmental stage all the way from birth up through the teenage years and tells us exactly what she sees in her practice. She's a practicing child psychologist. The digital addiction, the inability for children to control themselves, to... Um, self-soothe. Oh, like I can't do with the world. Yeah. I'm just going to do one right. of these. Or just, to show empathy. Just play. Yeah. And, what, and she also consults with schools all over the U.S., Asia, Europe, and she said kindergarten, first grade, second grade, I'm hearing the same thing. The teachers are telling us that the, schools are, the children are coming to school with an inability to maintain eye contact. When something goes wrong, they want, it, they want a reward. You know, they want to get to the next yeah. level. They want their teachers to be edutainers. Right. And then when something does go wrong, they can't pull it together. They just... They go off the deep yeah. end. And maybe even worse than that is they have an inability to show empathy toward others. Well, they're not seeing a fellow, fellow friend running in a playground, skim, scraping his knee on the ground, with bleeding, yeah. crying. They're not seeing that yeah. in their day-to-day -day activities right. of playing on a computer right. the whole time. I, I mean... I played with computers as a kid growing up, but it wasn't like today, mm -hmm. right? I still ran outside. I rode my bike everywhere. Exactly. Come home when the street lights come on. But I see know? with my kids at home, the first thing they do when they get home is, you know, they want to run to the computer to see, you know, their friends online. Right. I'm like, wait a minute. Why don't right. you just play with them outside? Right. Well, well, the other one I get is, uh, Daddy, I made a new friend today. Oh, yeah? Did you meet him on the playground? Meet him at school? No, I met them online. Oh, jeez. Like, oh, okay. Well, first of all, okay. that's great. You're having fun, but you yeah. know what? They're not real friends. Right. Just remember that. Right. So it, and it, and yeah. you can do a lot behind a keyboard. Yeah. You know that you wouldn't do in person with a real live person. So. so but the teachers and schools must notice this. Right. I mean, they've been absolutely. They, you know, if they've been educating for 20 yeah. years, I'm sure they see And a so we big see difference. a lot more children presenting with all of these social emotional issues that didn't exist before. Right. Um, and so she takes us through each stage of childhood development based on what she's seen in her practice, but also there's a whole other body of scientific evidence that's showing what's happening and why. Um, and so there's another doctor, Dr. Victoria Dunkley, who's also a child psychologist, who wrote Reset Your Child's Brain. This is a really good one that you can go out and read through. And she's got a four-week protocol that she has used with her patients, thousands of patients, and it works. Week one, start looking around. Where are all the Wi-Fi devices that your child has access to? Mm -hmm. Talk to your spouse, talk to your siblings, talk to auntie and uncle and grandma and grandpa, talk to little Johnny's parents down the street so he doesn't slip out and get his fix down there. Where does he spend most of his time? Right. So you want to create a safe environment for your child and then also create a list of things that you and your child will do to keep your child busy and happy during this detox period. And I'm not using the word detox lightly. Dr. Katherine Steiner Adair told us there are digital detox centers in Asia for five-year-olds. Oh, wow. Five-year-olds. And... In addition to that, we're now starting to see them here, even in Massachusetts. Really? Um, yeah. I didn't know that. Over in Belmont. So you got a lot of kids with issues, mm -hmm. development issues mm -hmm. from early ages right. coming up. And yeah. what Dr. Steiner Adair and Dr. Dunkley will tell us is that humans develop through human interaction. 
And that means that when you and I are communicating, you're not just dealing with my words, you're reading my face, right. you're sensing my emotions, and you're adjusting your response accordingly. When a child is in front of a tablet or an iPhone or a, a cell phone or a laptop or a gaming device, they are operating in the shallows. They're just on the surface. So they're not getting the brain development that we get through human interaction. They might be looking at little Tommy Tomcat or whatever that toddler game is. It's not an evidence-based program. It's not teaching how to model good behavior. It's not building the stimulus right. that builds the brain. It's some little app that the kids are having a ball with. So they can say things, not realizing yeah. the other person is neg negatively impacted by right. that. Oh, the facial get expressions, in, exactly. right? So not and picking you up get on the into signals. The, yeah. the online bullying and stuff, too, because... Oh, yeah. You know, in adolescence, you're dealing with kids whose prefrontal cortex, the frontal lobe, is not fully developed, so they're not even reading the signals around them in real life the way an adult does. Mm -hmm. They're interpreting things differently, and now they're out on social media saying and doing things without understanding the social, social and emotional impact that this is having on their peers. So what these doctors are telling us is that screen time is no substitute for humans children need to be outside as dr steiner adair said they need to be out under the rhododendron in their own private little world of imaginary play because going deeper and deeper and deeper into that imaginative play is what builds those synapses in the brain and creates their innovation it creates their creativity and they're not getting it on the screens. Well, I noticed, you know, back in our day, yeah. you know, if our parents were tired mm -hmm. and we'd come home, you know, we'd watch TV. Mm -hmm. um, but now the kids like these devices better because yeah. they're more interactive. Yeah. You know, rather than telling me what to watch, the kids are like, oh, I'm going to watch what I want to watch. Mm -hmm. And you're right. They. And it does, and it leaves us parents feeling like, ah, uh, we don't really know what we yeah. need to do but here. But it's we easy can... to give your kid one of these and say, just go yeah, do something. Because I need to get online I need, and I'm I busy. need to do this. I've got to cook dinner. Yeah. Just, yeah. And yeah. Um, I catch it at my house as well, mm -hmm. but I did notice something. When I shut up, what I do with, when they're on the computer, mm -hmm. I unplug it from the cable modem, yeah. and like in two seconds, the thing dies on them. <laughs> and they know it's me pulling the Dinner cord. Dinner time. Yeah. Well, what happens is that then I watch them and I, I notice. I noticed that within 10 minutes, they're playing in the playroom mm -hmm. with their dolls, mm -hmm. acting like kids again, yeah. little kids. So it's, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to say it's a drug, but it's addicting. It's and interesting that you use that word because it is hitting the same receptors in the brain yeah. that lead to addiction with drugs, alcohol, pornography, tobacco. It is a drug. And yeah. we don't know, and we're letting our kids have 12 packs a day. And I think know? even us adults with cell phones yeah i mean i i'm guilty mm -hmm. i always want to know what's going on you know what's going on with the latest news you know what's going yeah. on with this or that whatever you you know whatever you enjoy watching yeah it's so hard we to do. give it up we we don't have to give it up but we need to learn to use it in moderation like everything else and we need to model good behavior for our children so the psychologists will tell you Look back, learn what you need to learn, and then set up your house rules and enforce them. Right. So when my kids were little, we always had a rule that said no toys at the table. So when we're sitting down for a yep. meal together, we're present, we're with one another, right. and we're making connection. Right. So now we have to say no technology at the table. And so we know that now, and we can have a conversation. And if I see someone, you know, go like this, I'm yeah. like, <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, and, and it works. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think the kids on along, yeah, they appreciate that, right? Yeah. You just have to you have to put guidelines up. You do, and we all need our boundaries. It, and when it's the powerful. industry it's is powerful saying, to change. Right. All Wi Fi all the time. Yeah. That's what the industry that's all is trying to sell us. Yes. Because they've got a great profit model going. Yeah. And in fact that's what the what's, kids young. Hooked. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you mentioned something earlier well, about cell phone and or iPads on little baby stores yeah, yeah, or something? Yeah. yeah, there are products, they you know, the iPotty, there are little iPotty? The iPotty. Share with our audience what the iPotty uh, is because I I am past the that age. Of, is uh, literally a children. device with a potty training seat that you can now put your digital device on and the child can sit there and potty train. Watch a movie? And or, watch whatever or yeah. play with this. And Dr. Deborah Davis had said that is child abuse. You're sitting that child in front of 
a microwave emitting device. Right. And then when you look in the school space, we have heard for a few years now about the 21st century learner, the 21st century classroom. Yeah. And it turns out that is an industry campaign. They identified an untapped market in our children, and now they are making all these sweet offerings to our school administrators, to our state legislators at the state level to start getting technology at every level of education. Ah, man, when you think about it, Wi-Fi is just an invisible wire. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with educating the kids. Right. Well, we're going to talk but about we think that we in the need next segment. <laughs> So we're not saying technology, you can't have your technology. We're no. just saying you don't need the invisible wire. You can hook it up, hardwire it. Exactly. And use this, you know, use the Wi-Fi in short periods if yeah. you need to. That's yeah. all we're saying. That's it. I'm not saying that leave it on 24-7 yeah. and the schools at home. Yeah, it's not no so. technology, it's safe technology. Exactly. And we can do it. And we're just at one point at time and we'll get better and better at it. Well, is there anything else you'd like to bring up before we uh, in closing? Um, no, I, there's more books that have come out in like recent weeks. I saw something in the uh, Time magazine just in the last couple of weeks. There's another book out there that's talking about the digital addiction and how to protect our children. So oh, boy. You just have to know to look. It's all out there. So not only is the biological effects, mm -hmm. now the psychological effects. Mm -hmm. So as a parent, we're like, I know. Where, where does it end? Yeah, so, so just take a deep breath, yeah. do your due diligence, and then let's protect ourselves and our children while the politics play out. Politics play out. Yeah. So thank you, CC. Uh, mm -hmm. I think next time we talk, we're going to talk about, finally, solutions. Absolutely. There's a okay. lot of good ones. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.